Right, so next one of Maskell's traps is the basket full trap. Um, you basically got a basket, string, and a couple of sticks. So I'll read you what it says, but to do this one, we've got to look at two different traps. Because that's the way it's written in the book. So I'll tell you what it says first of all. So this engine is called the basket full to take kites and buzzards. It is set and tied in all things like unto the hurdle before, with all things thereunto belonging. The, this basket is commonly made nigh three fathom about in the skirts and so high that a man may well stand upright within him. The warreners do commonly in some places use, and then it says in brackets, rabbit time, to set him in plains, in warrens and parks, whereas conies are bred so that they take the kite and the buzzard in this basket. Well, this basket is a bit smaller than what they would probably have used, but we can still use this one. We kind of scaled it down a bit. But by the sounds of it, they use quite a big basket for catching um, kites, which we now in England call red kites, and buzzards. But we can still use this one. So I'll skip over to the other part. So, and I'll read it as it says on here. So this engine is called a fall trap to take buzzards and kites, which is after this sort, ye shall set a hurdle on the ground where ye think good, which hurdle is holden up before with a crooked stick. It might be better if your V was a little bit more central, but this will do it. Actually, sorry, this is the crooked stick. Holding up with the crooked stick. And that crooked stick is holding up with a forked stick put under him. It's basically something like this. Um, which forked stick must stand loose on the ground without veneva bridge or forked stick. Also, in setting up the neither end of the crooked stick that holds up the hurdle, must be made small and slightly put into the cleft of the fork, forked bridge and stick. Which forked stick is made fast and tied with two threads to the ground under the back of the hurdle, as ye may, as ye may easily perceive. And when ye do tile or set it up, it shall be good with the crooked stick's end let the bridge stand a handful high from the ground and put therein the end of the crooked stick as tickle as ye can that when anything comes to take the bait and treads it down the hurdle falls su suddenly upon them so what i will do is it's probably best we just start making it because the description is quite hard to understand but i can get it so we're going to take the crooked stick, we want to use it so we can just hold this basket up a bit. So I'm going to measure it upside down to a height where the basket isn't going to flip backwards but still come forwards. So about there I reckon would do it. Now this is one trap I've been wanting to do for quite some time when I looked at it in the thing I thought that's one I definitely want to do so there's our crooked no there's our forked stick so I'm gonna make sure that's got nothing sticking out the sides of it to um stop anything falling down so now we're going to want this one, what did it say, about a hand high, didn't it? A handful high from the ground, so I reckon we're going to want that, this this other one, we want to leave that a little bit lower than, say, say three fingers. So about there, I reckon.
Now this is some budlier I had, um, quite easy to cut and work with, but you could use, you know, anything you like really. So this part, I'm definitely going to cut these, any nobbles off, because I think this bit's going to be vital that this is quite slippery. I may take some of the bark off here as well, just in case. And I suppose this bit doesn't necessarily have to be this long, but I might shorten it just a little bit. So that is now going to sit on there. And you see that want to flip. That wants to flip out. The next thing we want to do now, Ty, we're going to do it to the basket. Now he did say in the um, in the book, you tie it to the ground behind, but we're going to tie it to the basket. Hold that there at the top. I reckon that's probably going to be about right. I suppose what you could do now is instead of judging it, you could actually put this down. Hold this roughly where it's got to go. And then we can get this string right by pulling it. I think that should probably just about do it. If it's wrong, we should be able to adjust it. So that's a piece of string now tied there. Now essentially, should be if we've done it all right the trap is essentially done now we just got to set it up so that one there that one there balance your basket on that one oh, this has got to be on the inside of the string Have that right down the bottom of that of this stick here, your crooked stick. Now essentially the idea is I'll move this camera around in a minute as well and see a better position. So when a bird or something comes in, it stands on a piece of string and this should fall down. So we'll try it. Yeah, so it works. So obviously they was probably using a lot bigger um, baskets than this. You know, if they was after kite and stuff like that. And 
and then adjust that down right down to the very bottom of your piece of wood there. So very similar to an Arapuka bird trap trigger. I'll bring this closer. So you've got your crooked stick here holding it up over the fork stick and your piece of string right at the very end um, it's probably a bit less than a hand high bird goes in stands on that and down it comes So I think that's a worthy trap to know, I reckon, in my opinion. You could do this with a dead full weight as well, you know, using paracord or whatever. Right, so anyway, um, I'm going to do a modern version of this as well, or maybe not a modern version, but a mod uh, version without an old fashioned basket, you know, try some other ways of doing it, you know, see what else we can do with this kind of trigger. And I will do the hurdle version of this as well. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you later.